How about that? They're doing the same thing today with Osama bin Laden, and that's where I've been getting at. Can you believe what you have been seeing on CNN today, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe it? <laughs> Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden, took a television camera crew with him, went into Osama bin Laden's hideout, interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. The FBI also, under the leadership of Louis Free, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and years and years and many years, and can't find him. Some doofus, jerk-off reporter with a camera crew waltzes right into his hideout and interviews him. And you know what his budget is? <laughs> Zip. Zilch, nothing. Now, that tells us two things. Either everyone in the intelligence community and all of the intelligence agencies of the United States government are blithering idiots and incompetent fools, including the entire apparatus of the FBI and all of their personnel, or they're lying to us. They're not looking for him at all. And the second is the truth. You see, the CIA created Osama bin Laden. They recruited him. They trained him. They found his leadership. They brought them all together. They showed him them how to fight the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. And when that was over, they still continued to fund him and train him, and they're now using him to help bring about world government by making him the big boogeyman because they can't use Saddam Hussein anymore. Did you ever hear of Osama bin Laden before you heard of Saddam Hussein? When did you start hearing of Osama bin Laden? It was after Saddam Hussein and Iraq were supposedly neutralized in the Gulf War because they needed a new boogeyman. But they're not looking for Osama bin Laden because I'm telling you right now, if I were the head of the Central Intelligence Agency, within two weeks I would have him dead or in custody without fail, without fail. If I had those assets and that money, he would be mine. I would own his terrorist ass within two weeks without fail. A reporter from CNN and his little camera crew got in to Osama bin Laden's secret hideout and conducted an interview. If you don't believe me, tune in to CNN. They're probably running it right now as I'm speaking. And if you believe it, you are one of the stupidest jerks that ever lived on the face of this earth. And whatever is going to happen that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it. Another social illusion, social engineering project 
to change the minds and the attitudes and the beliefs of the people of the world, and especially the United States, to bring about one world socialist totalitarian government. Can you believe what they were saying for a while? That Timothy McVeigh, the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, the Defense Intelligence Agency could not find Osama bin Laden in their wildest dreams. But Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols could and recruit him to be their partner in blowing up the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building. Bullshit! How stupid can you be? These guys didn't have a nickel between them. Not a nickel between them. How dumb can you, how stupid can you be? Put me in charge of the CIA. I guarantee you I will have him in custody in two weeks flat. Or dead. Take your pick. Take your pick. Give me that budget, those resources, those personnel. I guarantee you he will be mine in two weeks. And you know what? If I had a few loyal, good Americans who were willing to donate enough money, certainly not even a drop in the bucket compared to what they really have in these intelligence agencies to really go after him, I could still have him in two weeks. Piece of cake. So why, why do all these fools believe this charade? That a CNN reporter and his little camera crew can do what all the money and all the assets and all the eavesdropping and all the intelligence and all the satellites and all the undercover operatives in the world can never do. It's because they're not trying. They don't want to. Osama bin Laden is their creation, and he is serving them well. When in hell are all you people going to wake up? Are you kidding me? I mean, is this some kind of incredible joke that people are so stupid they'll fall for this? Do you know how much money the CIA and the National Security Agency and the FBI has at its disposal each year? Do you know how many agents they have that they can devote to this? Do you realize the technology that they have to be able to eavesdrop on every single conversation in the world? No matter how it's transmitted? and pinpoint the location of every one of those transmissions. And they can't find Osama bin Laden, but some CNN reporter, he just waltzes right on in there with his camera crew. Just like he knew where they were all the time. Bet you it was the CIA that sent him there. <laughs> I told him where he was. And, of course, they know where he is because they created him. They're the ones that are funding him and backing him and helping him to create their new utopian world. Hitler could not have ever come to power, absolute power in Germany, without the Reichstag fire. Hitler was a socialist. He understood social illusion. He understood social engineering. He knew how to get the support of the German people, and he did it by burning down the Reichstag. The Reichstag was, well, in our country, it would be the Capitol building that contains the Senate and the House of Representatives. 
So if somebody were to go and burn down the Capitol building today, they would use that as an excuse, as Hitler did, to round up all of the enemies of the New World Order, which would be me and most of you listening, and throw us into prison or execute us, declare martial law, and come to absolute and total power in this country. I wonder what Osama bin Laden's targets are supposed to be. And if they don't, you know, if this doesn't materialize in the next two or three weeks, it will eventually materialize because they haven't succeeded in getting the guns out of the hands of the American people, nor have they succeeded in taking our freedoms away. In fact, there's been a great awakening in this country and a, and a big backlash against these Marxist, communist, puke-faced, lying, subversive, Nazi, jackbooted, Gestapo thugs that is gaining momentum. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. And I'm telling you, one of the things that will give us the moral high ground and, uh, and will begin civil war is the day that they begin declaring martial law across this country taking guns out of the hands of the American people and rounding up American patriots. The war will start on that day. On that day. And there will be a war in this country, a civil war to restore, not a revolution, but a civil war to restore constitutional Republican government. Now, at the same time that that's going on, communist and Marxist underground forces will begin, or try to begin, a revolution in order to institute a Marxist, socialist, or communist government as a result of the Civil War. So we, patriots, will be fighting on two fronts. On two fronts. And you'd better understand which side you're going to be on. Restoration, revolution, our tyranny. I'll be fighting with the forces of restoration, and so should you better be. <laughs> and supposedly, we're not the only nation searching for Osama bin Laden. So, the vast economic resources, the vast technological resources, the vast personnel resources, the vast networks and intricate web spun over all these years by the CIA, the FBI, and the NSA. Can't find Osama bin Laden, but CNN can? Bullshit. Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols could Bullshit. So many people in this country have their heads so far up their ass, I doubt very seriously if they will manage to extricate it before they suffocate. What a shame. What a crying shame. How in the world could this country of all nations breed such a dumbed down, unthinking, illiterate, uneducated, stupid, ignorant population? Anybody got a clue? We're going to open the phones. 520-333-4578 is the number. Be right back. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good evening, Bill. How are you this evening? Good. Uh, I had read uh, on the Internet today a, a couple of things about Osama bin Laden, too, um, uh, re with regards to the CNN reporter uh, getting into uh, his uh, ultra-secret lair, uh, whatever the hell it is, you know. 
And I couldn't help thinking the same thing. Must be on the moon, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, you know. Oh well. It's how this reporter how, uh, get there? You know. <laughs> it's amazing how you have all the American intelligence agencies, British intelligence agencies. Everybody's looking for this guy, and all of a sudden, you know, some clown comes in with a camera, and oh, now he's on TV. Oh, here he is. Let me tell you something. If he's an enemy of Israel and the Mossad can't find him, then this thing is the biggest joke that you ever heard of in your life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I was actually trying to explain to some friends this weekend, uh, you know, about how the, Osama bin Laden is just the next, I, I even said he was the next Saddam Hussein. Yeah, he's the next you know, boogeyman. Find That's... some dark-skinned guy and everybody can go, ooh, we hate dark-skinned people, you know, and, and, and hide behind this guy. And uh, I actually think uh, if anything does happen, which is very unlikely, it will. But no, that's that's not true. Weeks, it, it is very likely that it will. Believe well, it or I mean, not. in the next two weeks, uh, if anything does happen, what about the Fourth of July? It's the 225th uh, anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, what about it? You know, that's a, that's a good time for it to happen. Yeah, well, I I certainly hope not. But uh, I hope it, I hope not too. But I'm telling you right now, as I told you before, I I'm telling you that something's going to happen. If it doesn't happen in the next two or three weeks, something eventually, something terrible is going to happen in this country, uh, and it's going to be a terrorist attack. And we're uh, going to know who did it. And, and, it's, and we're it's going to watch CNN and whatever, and they're going to go, oh, this is and, it, and it's going to be big enough that martial law could be declared and, and it could start the whole thing. Well, thank you for uh, getting, getting the truth out, and you have a good evening, sir. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Bye. Good evening. You're on the air. Um, hello. This is uh, Marie from Colorado, and you had posed a question in your program, Why Are People So Dumb? Yeah. When I was in 11th grade, my American history class, Mrs. Sheldon was my teacher, and this was 1971. And so, yes, I am approaching 50. And she told us, she says, whenever you read the newspaper or you hear anything in the news, you ask yourself two questions. The first question is, who stands to make the money from what happened, and who stands to make the power from what happened? And she says, and if you haven't answered your question in reading that article or listening to that newscast, then you're not being told the truth. And the problem is, is that teachers don't teach like that any longer. Well. And I, my kids never learned that in their class. And um, I'm the one who told them, hey, kids, listen to this. Listen to what mom says. My, Mrs. Shelton told me this, and that's one of the reasons why people are so dumb is because they don't analyze and don't instinctively think, hmm, this and this do not add up. Well, you're right. You're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. And then Mrs. Shelton, oh, you're probably in your 70s by now, so that, anyway, here's to you. And God bless you, Mr. Cooper, for your program. And will you be re uh, broadcasting this when you're taking that week? Off. Uh, that's up to WBCQ. They're going to determine what they broadcast. If you have favorite programs that you want to hear again, call them and ask them to play them. Okay, we will. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You're welcome. 520-333-4578 is the number. Um, good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Good evening, Bill. Yes. Hey, this is David. Uh, I'm checking in from Rhode Island. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I want to uh, comment on your discussion about when they... Immediately after this uh, mirror building blew up, in a short time after, they brought the building down and destroyed all the evidence. Yeah. And, and it wasn't brought down with the kind of bomb that allegedly Timmy McVeigh popped in front of the building. No, it was brought down with shape charges on the columns, just exactly like what happened when it was brought down first, <laughs> when, when half of it was brought down. And it's, it's just disgusting the way the average citizenry looks at this whole issue. And I'm telling you... That most of the calls they call when the time comes, they're gonna they, they're gonna turn they're gonna they're, they're gonna turn trader bill. Sure they will. So I I don't you know I'm, most I'm, most people will, but there's an infrastructure of dedicated patriots in this country who will not. And, no, and I and I, uh, and believe, I agree and, with you with that, and uh, I have made my pledge and I continue to make it. When I don't care what it is, who it is, when you're crossing the line, it's lock and load. Yep, and 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 it's going to cost somebody. Then you better believe it's not it. getting done for free anymore. That's right. So if they want to, you know, waste uh, ten people on some kind of a, you know, a, 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 an ATS sweep, they better have the equal amount taken out with them. Well, I I don't I don't. Uh, and I and I know that 
That's it. That's your attitude. I, I hope you use this make this time that you're going to spend, uh, you know, at your place, uh, you know, also for to recharge your batteries. Oh yeah, that's ex- that's one of the purposes. Oh uh, good. Of course. Well, I'm glad to hear that, and God bless you. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, because I am tired. I've, I've been working for so many years, so hard, uh, and uh, rarely, if ever, even take one day off to myself. And so, uh, yeah, part of this is going to be uh, sort of relaxing for me. Good evening, you're on the air. Uh, yes, hi, uh, William. Uh, there was an article in the New York Times about Daniel Spiegelman, who supplied the uh, weapons for the Oklahoma bombing. Well, he's, he's, what, he, what he did uh, was he was part of a of a group of so-called Aryan uh, uh, resistance army uh, that uh, that was robbing banks and things and providing funding uh, for the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building bombing. And part of what he did was he went to an American university and stole uh, famous uh, historical documents and took them to Europe to sell them. He's Jewish. Right. The, the article was December 30th. 1995, page uh-huh. 9 in the New York Times. Uh, let, let me ask you, where is he today? What is the latest on him? Uh, well, I, I don't know. He sort of disappeared after they discovered that the lawyer who defended him when he was convicted in court of stealing these documents and trying to sell them uh, was not a lawyer at all. And so uh, I, I believe that they, that they uh, um, overthrew his conviction because of that. He, he didn't have a proper defense and uh, sealed the records, and he disappeared. Okay, I saw it on your Internet site where he was convicted, but apparently he, n- he never went to prison at all, I guess. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, they just let him go. It's probably the Israeli Mossad, I, I, think. I, think, he's, I, think, I think he's with... Well, I think this was a combination of the, of the CIA, the FBI, the Israeli Mossad, uh, the BATF, and uh, several other uh, of the German intelligence, for sure, because... Uh, Andreas Strassmeyer was a part of this. He's another Jewish uh, man who was a member of the German intelligence uh, structure um, who, who uh, was instrumental in planning the whole thing. Right. Well, our government may as well be the Mossad. And, you know, Capitol Hill is Israeli-occupied well, territory. As, what, what, uh, what, you have, what you have to understand is this is not leading toward an Israel of the world. It's leading toward a, a Marxist-Socialist utopian or they believe it's utopian, it's going to be like the old Soviet Union, world government. Um, and whenever, yes, and whenever the media covers something up real well like this, the way they let Spiegelman go like that, uh, you, you know it's the Jews who are behind it. No, we don't know it's the Jews behind it, and, and I've never said that, and, and neither should you. Uh, George Bush is certainly not a Jew, but he's a part of it. Right, he works for them. Yeah, they put him in office. No, and it's not that he works for them. You don't understand the structure of the organization that is actually bringing apart world government. The reason that they're able to recruit so many Jewish people to be a part of this is the Jews have never allowed themselves to assimilate as citizens, really, of any country. They're always Jewish. They always separate themselves. They always look forward to next year in Jerusalem. They believe themselves to be a part of a world, and they want to bring about a world government. So they're they are sympathetic to this whole one world government ideal. But the people at the heart and soul of all of this, and there are a lot of Jewish people involved, are what's called the Illuminati. George Bush is certainly not a Jew, but he's a part of it. Uh, Rick Sanchez has been there throughout this morning for us. Rick, tell us where you are and what the latest is. Well, I'm in that area, if you're familiar with uh, this area, of uh, where West Broadway and Hudson come together uh, right at Chambers. That would put us about a block and a half away from uh, the site of where the explosion was. That area has just been uh, evacuated because uh, police have found what they describe it as a suspicious device and they fear that it might be something that could lead to uh, another explosion. Obviously, there, there, there's a real sense of caution here on the part of police. Their fear is that there may have been explosive device planted either in the building or in the adjacent area, and that's why they're being so cautious. 
we've heard reports of secondary explosions after the aircraft impacted, whether in fact there wasn't something else at the base of the towers that in fact were the coup de grace to bring them to the ground. People don't understand. There may be more. Any one of these fucking buildings can blow up. This ain't done yet. inside the building, the way go upstairs, and they, they, just, they just let loose, everything just let loose inside the building. So what, what you tell me is that there was a plane or whatever hit the building, then a secondary explosion. It was like three explosions after that. We came in after the, after the fire, we came when the fire was going on already. We was in the staging area inside the building. Could be nothing, nothing no more than this. You're in the building trying to help people, and it's exploding on the inside of the building. So I don't think you're getting any worse than this.